Hi guys, and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now I love these kind of projects, projects that are made by you, by ham radio enthusiasts around the world, creating solutions and sharing them with the world. Now essentially this project turns pretty much any Android device into a VHF transceiver. Now this project is fully open source and it's available on GitHub, allowing you to modify it to your own needs or even contribute to the main project. What's even better is that the cost of all the parts can equal or less than just 35 US dollars. This project has been created by Vance KV4P from the US. And if you head over to his website, you'll find a list of parts that you need to purchase. Now you'll need the radio board, the ESP32 development board, an antenna, which you'll most likely already have, an OTG adapter or cable, an SMA female 90 degree connector, a sticky gel pad, and of course, the PCB. Now the PCB is available from JLC PCB, and it's as simple as uploading the PCB files to their website to place the order. Now, even though the individual boards are extremely cheap, there is a minimum order of five boards. So consider making some of these for your fellow ham radio buddies or other club members, if you're in a club that is. Now the PCB itself contains a filter network and I would recommend to use the assemble feature when ordering the boards. This means the surface mount components will already be soldered to the board when you receive them. However, if you're confident that you can solder those small components, then you can save yourself some money and just order the boards and do the components separately. Now I'd like to quickly thank today's video sponsor and that's JLC PCB. Now, if you do not know who JLC PCB is, well, they're a one-stop shop for everything related to PCB manufacturing at a fraction of the cost compared to others. They're affordable and provide a fast and high quality service. JLC PCB can manufacture one to eight layer PCBs and with a fast lead time of up to just 24 hours, their strict quality control is trusted by over 5.4 million customers around the world. Now, JLC PCB has an in-house production guaranteeing consistent quality for prototypes and large orders. The ordering process is super easy with instant quotes and a very user-friendly platform, which includes real-time tracking of your order. So if you want to DIY your PCBs, JLC PCB is the best choice. Even multi-layer PCBs are incredibly affordable six layer PCBs start at only $35. Now you can also get a $30 coupon for six layer PCBs on their website. That means you can experience high quality multi-layer PCBs for just $5. Now I have here all the parts needed. However, the board I have is actually version 1.5 and the latest at the time of making this video is version 1.7B. And the improvements made to 1.7b is the filtering. Now don't worry, I do have a 1.7b PCB on order from JLC PCB, and I'll make another video when that arrives. But for now, I'll build this version. The small SMD filter components are already fitted to this board, so I just need to fit the radio board, the ES32 development board, and the SMA socket. Now with these types of radio boards, I like to just solder one connector first just to make sure all of the other connectors are aligning with the PCB pads. Now, once you're happy with the orientation, just solder the rest of those connections. Now, now we need to fit and solder the ESP32 development module. Now, there are quite a lot of pins, but just make sure the USB connector that's on the ESP32 board is located at the bottom edge of the PCB like this. Again, I solder one pin first, just to make sure the ESP32 module is totally flat against the PCB, and then I solder the rest of the pins. Now once finished, you will need to trim each of the pins sticking out of the board, as this is the side which will rest against your phone or tablet. Now just be careful here, as they are pretty tough, and well, they're ping everywhere. Personally, I cut mine while holding them just inside a rubbish bag, or trash bag for you American guys. Lastly, we now need to solder the SMA socket and again, just solder one pin first to make sure it's flush to the board. Now back over on the quick start guide, you'll find a link to some 3D printer files. Now this is so that you can print off one of these protective cases. Now this keeps the top of the board protected while it's in use. If you don't have a 3D printer, 
Maybe you've got a friend that's got a 3D printer or you can actually find somewhere online that can print them for you. You just have to upload your files. Now there's also a little section where you can store the USB-C OTG adapter when it's not in use. Of course, you wouldn't really want to lose that part. Finally, you can attach the gel to the PCB like this. Now this would provide a soft padding between the board and the back of your final tablet. Now this gel can be removed and replaced many, many times and it does not leave any sticky residue. Now we have the board built and ready to be used, we do need to flash the ESP32 module with the correct firmware. Now to do this, just head back to the Quick Start Guide website and use the online flasher. Simply plug a USB-C cable into the USB-C port and then the other end plug into your computer. Press the flash firmware button on the web page and you should be presented with an option box to choose a device. Now normally you'll see something titled as a UART bridge controller, like this. And once you click connect, you'll then be prompted to install the KV4P firmware. Now this may take a couple of minutes to do, but don't unplug the device from your computer while this process is taking place. Also don't manoeuvre away from this website. Only remove once the screen shows installation complete. Now you can unplug the device from your computer. But what we do need to do now is install the application on the Android device. This is the application which will control the radio board and pass the audio to and from the board to your phone or tablet. Now the application will work on both and it's available free of charge from the Play Store. You can simply search for KV4P and it will come up with it in the list of applications. In fact, the source code for this application is also on GitHub meaning you can modify the application or even contribute to the project to suit your needs or help out the community. Now, when you plug the device into the phone or tablet, you should be prompted with this message. Once you accept, the KV4P application should load. Now, if it doesn't, just tap the icon on the normal kind of desktop. The application should now be working with the device and you should be able to use this as a normal VHF transceiver. Now, let's go over some of the options on the software as it stands today. Obviously from this moment in time, the application could look different or have more features because it's constantly being worked on. Now to enter a simplex frequency, you just tap the large frequency digits at the top. The keypad pops up and then you can enter the frequency. Now you'll also notice under the simplex frequencies, I have some pre-programmed repeaters. Now this is actually a group that I named repeaters and then manually added some local repeaters to that group. Selecting a different memory or repeater is just as simple as tapping the one you need to be loaded. Of course, you can also delete or edit a stored memory by just tapping on those three dots to the right. Pressing on the plus button on the lower right will pop up a new memory screen. And this is where you can go ahead and enter the details for a new memory, including an offset, and a CTCSS tone. The settings cog button on the top right will show the settings screen. Now here you can enter your own call sign in the top text box. Now this is used when sending APRS messages. Yep, you can send actual RF APRS messages with this app. Other options include setting a squelch level, enabling or disabling pre and de emphasis, and also including a low or high pass filter which can sometimes be needed when using FM. Other options include a sticky PTT, which will make the PTT button latched. And then there's a disable animation switch. And then there's a closed caption button, which takes you to your closed caption settings on your device, if it has it. Now the main PTT button is that large round button located in the middle at the bottom. Simply press and hold that to transmit. The app uses the device's microphone and speaker for audio in and out. So if you've got a rather decent speaker on your Android device, then it should sound really good. If you select the text chat tab at the bottom, you'll be able to enter a destination call sign and then type a message. Now, assuming the receiving radio is on the same frequency and that it can receive APRS messages, then when you press the send button, that message will be transmitted over RF using the frequency set on the main screen. Now here is a decode of the transmitted message using my computer and an SDR receiver. Now if you're wondering what the transmitted audio sounds like, 
then this is what it sounds like while receiving it with an SDR receiver. This is uh, M0DQW. That's audio from the KV4P Android radio transceiver. Mike Zero Delta Quebec Whiskey. Over. On the settings page earlier, we saw the closed caption settings. Now, if enabled, then your Android device will transcribe the received audio to text on the display. And most of the time, it does actually appear to work okay. Now, one last thing to mention, and you may have seen this earlier, but my Android device is too thick to use that recommended USB-C to USB-C OTG adapter. So if you find this is the case with yours, then you can use a short USB-C to USB-C cable like I have here. Now, let me know down in the comments below what you think about this. Now, this is definitely a far cheaper solution than buying an Android device which already has a radio board built in. And what's also nice is that as the Android app is open source, just imagine the possibilities. I can already imagine the implementation of the repeater book API. So only local repeaters are shown based on your device's GPS. And also a packet radio features and APRS features, not just sending messages. Now, it's definitely a great time to be alive and be interested in ham radio. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video.